Yo. Yo. <laughs> Let me explain something to you right now. Walking Dead, the Telltale series, A New Frontier. I just played this game, and this time they're debuting it as a two-part. Listen, I don't know how you do it, Jay. I'm telling you, I'm calling you Jay because I keep saying his name wrong. But listen, I don't know how you do it, Jay. I don't know how, but you guys manage to blow everything out the water every time you guys come out. What was it like with this particular project? And also talk about the way you up the ante with the graphical detail, gameplay, brutality, uh -huh. and storytelling. Walk it all. Walk, walk, please. Yes, you're going to take the mic. You have to because I'm scared. All right, take it. Um, well, first off, thank you. And it's not me. Um, it's everyone at the office at Telltale. Uh, just a tremendously talented group of really passionate um, creatives. And uh, we just work really, really hard at this stuff and we don't do it without our fans and every time we make an episode we'll be watching for fan feedback and seeing what they think and what they're what they kind of want but also what they are not expecting and um, definitely wasn't expecting so for this yeah so this is this third season and it's been um, uh, it's been a long time since season two ended and we're you know it was important for us to have something that acted as a new beginning, but also a continuation. So it's not called season three, it's a new frontier for multiple reasons. Um, you'll know when you play the game. Um, but yeah, you, you're, um, you know, you're playing this thing as, a, as, as an all-new lead character, Javier Garcia Dominguez. Um, who's a disgraced uh, pro, former pro ball player, kicked out of the league for gambling and needs to go back and reconnect with his family. And um, one thing leads to another, the undead apocalypse happens and eventually he meets Clementine. Um, and that Clementine is either going to be a total stranger to you if you haven't played the other two seasons, right. or if you have played them, uh, your story is going to basically be tailored to the Clementine you've created. So we're looking at how you role played as Clem, the decisions that you made, and you're going to meet a Clementine that's different for everyone depending on her past that, that you were responsible for. So that's kind of how we got to A New Frontier. And um, and as far as the, the graphics and the look, I mean, if you look at the Walking Dead comic, um, you know, for the last, you know, 10 plus years, it's it's always been black and white, but the, you know, there's color covers and inside it's black and white. The first two seasons were kind of um, uh, um, line drawing, but in color and kind of looking like the pages of the comic. Mm. But for A New Frontier, we want it to feel like the, the lush, vibrant covers of the comic come to life. Phenomenal. Look, phenomenal. The first thing I noticed, like, not to spoil you anything, but right out the gate, somebody's running. And when I saw that, I was like, yo, it just looks different. Like, it just looked more um, official, more polished, more even believable, still line drawn, but it had this extra touch to it, this extra pop. And I was like, how do they do this? So, out the gate, that blew me away. Now, the next question I got for you, and this is with crowd play. How has crowd play worked with you since you guys introduced it? And is there anything that you thought of that you could do differently with the crowd play going forward? No, just, um, you know, we've, anyone who's played, you know, adventure games for the last 30 years might have memories of sitting down in their living room and then their mom, their dad, their brother, sister kind of can hover around and kind of say, oh no, click on that or oh, tell him this. And that works really well for our games. It always has. Uh, actually, all the way back to season one of Walking Dead, we would get together with the cast and the dev team. We'd play at our house for fun. Uh, kind of just yell at the true. screen. And um, one thing led to another. We did that at a couple other fan events for The Wolf Among Us. And and uh, eventually, we found ourselves at the Alamo Draft House in Texas when we premiered uh, Tales from the Borderlands on the big screen. And we just, all the fans were there, you know, drinking a beer, having a burger, and we're playing the game on the screen. And everyone's shouting, you know, oh, do this, do that, or, you know, tell them to F off or whatever and and we love it there's so much passion and energy in the room when that happens and um, eventually we, we decided to actually um, technically integrate it into our content so uh, starting with Batman this past year you can if you're sitting in your living room not only can people shout and kind of be part of the crowd but you they can actually take out their phone at the same time and 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 you can see you know 
yeah, I'm playing the game, but there's also 10 people here at my party, and they're all, you know, 70% of them want to give that person a hug. And they're playing along with their phones. Phones, tablets, anything you have that connects to the internet. It's real easy. Um, but, you know, just on this tour, we, we just came from London. We had fans into our screening room, and, you know, I think I think what we like is when, if you're crowd playing, but you're also kind of shouting at the same, because there's something about that passion when you're it, with a group full of fans, and everyone kind of wants one thing or another thing, and it's it's kind of it's kind of like having that that argument of like do this or do that right in the moment and um, it's just a lot of fun it's a lot of energy we're gonna be doing that again here tonight in this warehouse so the first fans in the country will be playing here in Brooklyn and uh, in Brooklyn yeah and um, yeah we're, we're excited it's um, you know uh, it's it's just been a long road to get here and we're excited for fans to either play it alone or play it with friends now I have to ask you this now I'm gonna do my best to ask this question without spoiling anything, okay? So, but so follow me, you know what I'm saying, with this question. So, there's a person that makes an appearance. Oh, okay, all right. And when he makes the appearance, I'm like, oh, I remember him. Yep. So, my thing is, someone like that. I was like, yo, because if but like this, if you love Walking Dead, obviously obviously you watch it every Sunday. Like you know what I'm saying? So there's someone from the actual TV show that I was like, oh, and I'm not used to seeing that because everything is so different and original in this world. So because I saw that, I wanna know what are your thoughts on the most hated character in Walking Dead now, which is Negan, who's the most hated character and do you think we'll ever see a character like him appear in the Walking Dead video game with Telltale? Do you think there's a room for someone like him to exist in this world at some point? Well, what I can say is this, is that um, with The New Frontier, our, our storyline is right up around where the comic storyline is now, which is, okay. and the comic storyline is always kind of a little bit ahead of the TV show, and it's kind of two different universes, and gotcha. um, so it's, you know, we've had Herschel and Glenn, and now another character in season three show up. He's actually in the trailer. We can say one of those two surprise characters was Jesus. Yeah! So, oh, so Jesus, yeah, that. yes. Yo, Je crazy. Yo, yo, you gotta see this part. It was so fun. You gotta play this game. No, you gotta hold the belt. You gotta hold the belt real quick. I'm telling y'all right now, yo, you gotta play this game. One of the reasons why y'all play this game is the amazing dialogue, the amazing writing, the way they... Excuse me, the way they bring you into the world. It don't matter who's the lead character at all. They're genius in terms of writing and making you care. It is, um, I love you, dude. It's unbelievable what your team is capable of, no matter what it is. So I just had to tell you that. Thank right. you. Uh, on behalf of all of us, we thank you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, as far as Negan goes, this isn't going to be the Negan game. Okay. I will say that. Okay. It's, um, But, you know, he's the most hated character, I think, on the show right now for a reason, because he's supposed to be. He's done awful things to, you know, who you see as a hero. Yeah, he, but yeah. the thing about that is with any of the villains we've seen in Walking Dead um, or anyone that sort of Rick's group has kind of come up against, there's always that, that duality to the scenario. Whereas, you know, well, maybe these were good people at one point too. And maybe we're not as good as we think we are because we've also done horrible things. And it's, it's that morally gray line that all these characters are walking and that you as a player are walking now and thinking about what you've done and thinking about about, you know, this person might seem awful to you, but to them, they're also maybe just trying to survive, or maybe they've crossed the line and they're too far gone. It's mm. it's always that that question of morality and who's who who still has their humanity and mm. um, humanity, morality, and even before all of that, one of the core 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 themes and elements of The Walking Dead is always family. Mm. And you Absolutely. know, it's that's yes. been that's been a thread in the comic between Rick and Carl and. Um, and you know things that happened with Shane and Lori, and it's been there for Walking Dead for us, and and season one with Lee and Clem and kind of a surrogate family, yeah. and the surrogate family theme was throughout season two and we've got some of that here as well in a new frontier and it, things get complicated so um, you know uh, episode one ties the bind part one and episode two ties the bind part two are mm. definitely about family through and through and yeah. and uh, we think you'll you'll realize why that is by the time you finish part two now, I got a tough question for you, right? Now, there's a lot of people, and I'm, I'm meeting like celebrities, all these type of people all the time, 
And when you look at when you look at a story, whether you're a celebrity or not, but when you look at a story and we live in our lives, sometimes when we make a decision and after that decision is made, it could be a year later, two years later, and you'd be like, you know what? What if I would have did things differently? Have you guys ever thought about using and I think I may have asked you this question before, but I would love to see what Telltale does with a story, but that's based on like a true story. For example, let's say, let's say uh, LeBron James, or for example, I got a, I got a friend named Shea Cotton. Shout out to my man Shea. What's up, Shay? But Shea Cotton was the person he's labeled as the the, the LeBron before LeBron. Oh yeah. Because he was he actually beat LeBron. He beat Kobe. He like beat he he's the one. But with college and certain things that happened, yeah. he got screwed over by people that you didn't think would screw yeah. you over. So there's a lot of real life stories that's happening. Would you ever take a real life story from someone and if they could do their life different or do something different and make a game out of it? You know, um, I think that would be incredible. It's, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Um, and it's actually interesting you bring up sports because even like, you know, we don't make sports games, but that something like that might even be cool to do like a sports drama. You ever see Rudy or Hoosiers or like something like that could be cool. I'm just saying. And, and that's what I mean because I really feel and like Shay is my boy. I could like put you in contact. His story is crazy. But anyway, the reason why I brought that up is because I feel like people would gravitate even more if they could grab a fantasy with the way you design it you could take it to a whole nother level with something that's actually really touchable and physical because they actually lived it like and people witnessed that living that they did as a lead character i think that would be crazy so i got two more questions we're gonna wrap it up now this question right here i feel is the most important question when i was talking to you earlier about call of duty and battlefield how call of duty had all these dislikes on their youtube uh, channel when they showed the trailer for infinite warfare but yet all those dislikes and everybody saying battlefield this and all this other stuff next thing you know for the eighth consecutive year call of duty's number one in the united states in terms of sales so obviously the people that was whining and complaining it didn't matter because people love these games for the reasons why the creators create them. So you said that being creators, you wanted to do what you wanted to do. And this is the best I've played of Telltale. And I didn't even finish the whole story. But from camera angles to camera cuts, to, excuse me, to the dialogue and decisions that you make, graphics, setting, everything that you guys did, it was just that much better. So, what does it mean? I'm so I'm I'm dead ass serious, dog. I'm I'm the realest. You know how I get down. Like, what is it about you and your team creatively, as a team? Because you can't do it by yourself. But creatively as a team, what is it that really gets y'all pulse racing and running, just to be able to create something like this to get the reactions that you get out of someone like me? Um, I think that's kind of what fuels us is what doing this for the fans and. Mm. Um, and and what we're going to do the fan, for the fans is kind of up to us, yeah. but kind of hoping they're going to enjoy it and kind of hoping we're going to get the kind of reactions that... So I think we heard you reacting to a couple of surprises and twists earlier. Like I, said, I was yelling like a mother F-U-C-K-E-R. I'm trying not to curse, you know what I'm saying? But I was... Yo, you y'all know how I get. You know how I get. Yes, it, 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 I, it's like that. Like you know what I'm saying? I could, I, it's like you can't talk. You really left me speechless. All I could do is yell. Seriously, go Thank ahead, take it away, man. Thank you. Um, and and uh, we appreciate that. That's um, you know, it was a long a long road to get to this point for a new frontier. Like we said, it's been you know, season two finished in 2014. A lot of people want to know what's next for Clementine, but a lot of people think maybe there's something new we could do and we're just thinking well we want to do what we want to do and frankly that's somewhere in between this is a great place to start if you haven't played the others it's a great place to continue on because you're going to be meeting a clementine that you may have helped shape uh throughout the last couple years and 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 we're kind of we're kind of we are writing and creating for for a lot of different audiences at the same time and that's what we want to do um I have a tough question for you. go go for it I have a tough this is going to be a tough ass question okay will telltale 
always make single player experiences when it comes to these type of games. The reason why I'm asking this is because I want to back that up. Oh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold the belt, hold the belt. This is about to get real right now, son. So the reason why I'm asking this is because, especially after playing this one and how you always talk about family, yeah. right? So to me, there's parts in, in like the game where like, let's say, you know, Javi and Clementine couldn't agree on a decision. Right. So let's say player one says this and player two says that. I think it would take the gameplay and decision maker in a deeper toll in terms of like a like a little like I wouldn't say a comp excuse me, I wouldn't say a combat system, but a system designed where if So the way you can do that right now is with crowd play. So um not just two players, but up to ten, twenty, honestly hundreds and potentially thousands if you've got like a huge, huge arena full of people. And we're, we're, we're working towards that. We hope to do really big, you know, premiere events. We're kind of starting smaller, um, like Alamo Draft House or yeah. different screening rooms. But someday we could be in a big arena. We could be like in an IMAX theater playing this thing with with a ton of fans. So what you tell... So, wait, wait, wait. Maybe we couldn't be in IMAX. I don't know. That's, yeah. no, why not? I don't know. Why not? IMAX, baby. Private so, rental, we'll see. The reason, the reason why I'm saying that is because, like, let's say you play in the game, right? And you go and do all these other things. Oh, and oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I need a mic. Yeah. So, let's say you play in the game and the decision is on you as a single player. And let's say you want to choose this and you choose it. But let's say you make your choice and then other players can make all these other different choices that will go over your choice? Yeah. So, you have the option. So, when it's on crowd play, it can be um, the pilot controls and can override. So, even if the if, even if 90% of your audience wants something, you can still override it and do what you want to do. Or you can set it where the audience always controls everything. So what you're saying is it would be cool if mul multiple players uh, could play and one player could be Javier, the other could be Clementine. Yes. What you do is uh, the first player controls Javier and then with this, as it switches between Javier and Clem, uh, set it to crowd control and then when it's scenes where you're controlling Clementine, let the audience or a player two control her decisions. Oh, hold up. I normally I would just drop the mic, but it, it's like a hard concrete, so I'm not gonna do that because this costs a lot of money. But that right there is the signal that the interview is over. <laughs> Telltale series has done it again. I really feel that The Walking Dead is like your first love, it's your baby, because I feel like this game takes your talent to a whole nother level. And look, I love the Batman. You know what I'm saying? I still gotta play uh, Tales from Borderlands. But I'm telling you right now, this one right here, <laughs> This is a game changer. And to end it off, to end off this interview, there needs to be a Walking Dead award that you give to another company in terms of someone that can live up to this standard. Now, you know how you have like the Michael Jackson award like or all these other things? The Walking Dead, this new frontier, has put Telltale in a category where their brand, their name, is an award in itself. I love you, Jay. That's absolutely right. Yo, I love you, Jay. Love I love you, Jay. We love you, too. This is crazy. It's your boy, Hip Hop Gamer, on your Hot 9-7 every day. That's my word. I'm out. Do you have anything you want to say to the fans before we close? Um, just thanks for being there for us and playing our games. And we're excited for everyone to play the premiere on December 20th. And after this year, three more episodes. And, uh, and then we move on to Guardians of the Galaxy in 2017. Oh, man. Is there anything, is there anything else in 2017 besides Guardians of the Galaxy? There are lots of surprises left for next year. So, yes. Oh my God. Lots coming. Lots in the cooker right now. Stay tuned. E3 2017. See, like, it's going to be hot. I can't wait. We out of here. Peace. Woo!